Now, let us discuss about national environment policy. During the uh, lecture on environmental management system EMS, almost at the end I mentioned about also one of the government you know initiatives in, in the line of environment management is NEP. National environmental policy or national environment policy has an enormous role to play in the you know best management of environment for our country. National environmental policy has various important role to play. It is an initiative taken by Ministry of Environment and Forest in 2006, largely to mainstream the environmental concerns into all of our development activities, any kind of development activities that has to take place in any part of our country must include the concerns and the necessary steps for environment management. It is an also effort that Indian government has showed their commitment towards clean development, clean environment and making positive contribution to the international efforts. Today, all of us we know that India plays a very, very important role at the international arena of environment management, climate change. So, keeping that in mind, our national environment policy has a very important role to play for environment restoration and management in our country. NEP emphasizes also the conservation of various resources, various kind of natural resources and it also points that the best way to aid conservation is to ensure that people dependent on those resources obtain better livelihoods from conservation and not from the degradation of those resources. It is for, for their own interest that they would or should take care of the natural resources on which their livelihood is based upon. Now, national environment policy seeks to stimulate partnerships, partnership with different stakeholders, public agencies, local communities, private entities, academic institutions, scientific research institution, even investment community and of course, international development partners like UNDP, UNEP, FAO, WHO, many other organizations in harnessing their respective resources and the strengths for environmental management. So, it is again I am telling, it is in the best interest of our community to come forward and take care of the, you know, the resources on which their livelihood is based upon. So, environmental management to the best possible way would not only ensure a green and clean environment, but also would ensure the continuous supply of natural resources which are important ingredient for generating livelihood for millions of people in our country. Involvement of Panchayat Raj institutions and urban local bodies are also very, very important in national environmental policy and its implementation. NEP also seeks to revisit the CRZ notification, coastal regulation zone notification to make the approach towards coastal environment regulation more holistic and thereby ensure the protection of coastal ecological system, the people who are depending on the coastal system, the vulnerability of those coastal areas to extreme natural events like cyclone, flood, tsunami and also potential sea level rise. NEP also emphasizes the importance of environmental impact assessment or we call it also as EIA. Environment impact assessment will continue to be the principal methodology for appraisal and review of various projects that takes place anywhere in the country. NEP also facilitated to achieve the sustainable development, environmental protections shall be one of the important or integral part of this development process and cannot be considered in isolation. As I mentioned in one of the previous lectures that environmental management system must not be you know dealt with in isolation from the other management system of an any you know institution, organization, industry or company. We need to learn to integrate EMS into the overall policy framework. Then only you will find that that environment aspect of any kind of activity will be taken care of in appropriate manner. 
Now, NEP also highlights certain you know objectives. It actually talks about conservation of critical environmental resources. When I say critical environment resources, largely means those resources which are you know very vulnerable in many manner. So, if those resources are not utilized in appropriate manner, then they may be totally removed from the ecosystem. So, there is a chance of, of losing that particular environmental resource. So, those resources we call as critical environment resource. Conservation of critical environment resource is one of the objectives of NEP. Second, intergenerational equity. Now, the questions of equity we have discussed you know couple of times in this course. Equity also is important from the viewpoint of livelihood security. Equity also important in the sharing of resources and again the resources natural resources are directly linked with the livelihood. So, if intergenerational equity is somehow is ensured then certainly the livelihood security of the community can also be you know sustainable in every manner. When I talk about intragenerational equity, there is also intergenerational equity. Now, intergenerational equity, the question comes in when that our generation, when we actually extract the benefit from the resources, natural resources that, that are available to us, we must ensure that we use those natural resources in a judicious manner, so that the future generation can also get the benefit of those natural resources and that is you know called as intergenerational equity. Number 4, integration of environmental concerns in economic and social development. Now, there are lot of awareness across various stakeholders. People now understand the importance of environmental concerns in every you know phase of our life and especially economy and social development. These two are very, very you know uh, closely related with environment more and more awareness, more and more you know deliberations are required to, to bring environment or mainstream environment with economic and social development of a region, of a country and overall the world. Efficiency of in environmental resource use is another important objective of national environment policy. Now, there are many environmental resource say one if I consider uh, you know coal or gas. These are all resources. Now, we must utilize these resources in such a manner that we can get the benefit to the maximum possible way with limited uses. So, that means enhancing the efficiency of that particular resource. For that, we need better technology, better engineering, better management system. 6. Environmental governance. Now, we understand that no system whether it is a small school or college or your home itself, if the governance or the, or the system is not properly maintained, nothing will work. Similar thing is also for environmental governance. So, we need certain rules and regulations, certain tools and techniques for proper management of resources, so that environment is managed in an appropriate manner and for that we need this regulation otherwise there will be you know inappropriate utilization of resources which we discussed at the very beginning of this particular course. Enhancement of resources for environmental conservation. Now, conservation of environmental resources actually will finally decide the sustainability of these resources how long actually you can use a particular resource. That depends on that how best you are actually managing that particular resources. So, conservation of natural resources or enhancement of conservation of a particular resource is also another important objective of national environment policy. Now, principle of national environment policy. Like any other policy of course, you know NEP also uh, is based on certain principles and those principles are very important to run this NEP in an appropriate manner. If you look at that human beings are at the center of sustainable development concerns, human beings are at the center of NEP. Then second is the right 
to you know development the right to development must be fulfilled so as to equitable share of these resources are there for not only for development purpose but also for the environmental needs for present as well as for future generation environmental protection is an integral part of the development process you cannot separate development process and environment protection this has to be integrated because if you take care of environment your development process will be sustainable now if you other way want to you know get success in the development path then environment also has to be taken care of precautionary approach what does it mean it talks about that where there are credible threats or serious kind of you know impacts can happen if you utilize certain environmental resources so to avoid that we must understand the scientific reason and the scientific manner of maintaining or managing these resources so we must also look at that how we can prevent any kind of environment degradation to a impending threat like climate change is one impending threat it can cause certain impact which could be unseen unknown but precautionary approach comes into picture to avoid any kind of irreversible damage to this kind of unseen phenomena economic efficiency all of us we know that at the end of a day everything boils down to economy now economic efficiency this principle it requires that the services of environmental resources to be given economic value and this kind of value it need to be counted equally with the economic values of other goods and services like a forest resources a timber or clean water or a good soil or a good medicinal plant these are the gift from nature there are natural resources but we must attach certain value that is what this economic efficiency principle is talking about some kind of economic value and this value should be countable and should be at you know in the same line for other goods and services that we actually you know buy or we pay for because that's the way it will help us to understand that what are the actually value is attached to a particular environment resource natural resources and then only we can understand that if we lose that particular resource how much actually economic loss that can happen to the country or to the region and if we understand that figure then certainly there will be enormous amount of sincerity out of sheer fear or concern of losing that much of economic wealth so in a sense we should not consider the natural resources as a free gift and continue using as much as we want if a value is attached to that particular you know resource then certainly the management of that particular resource also will be much better now entities with incomparable values this is another important principle of nep a conventional economic cost benefit analysis could not be applied in such entities because these entity these natural resources importance of value in our life or in in, in the life of mankind is beyond any monetary calculation so we should have priority in allocation of of societal resources for their conservation without consideration of direct or immediate economic benefit equity we have discussed a lot about this nep also based on equity principle the cardinal principle of equity or justice requires that human beings cannot be treated differently based on irrelevant difference between them all shall be treated equally in terms of benefits and implication the issue of equity is also important when it comes to access that particular resources by someone legal liability now liability for environmental damage would deter the environmentally harmful action people will think twice if there is a legal liability attached with any environmental resource and its mismanagement compensate compensation of you know for the victims of environmental damage also comes under legal liability so any organization any company industry start a project and then after few months suppose is damages some natural resources soil water biodiversity they have 
to compensate that those people who are surviving in that particular area on the basis of these resources. So, it follows polluter pays approach. So, it can be based you know fault based liability or strict liability as well means if you damage a particular resource resource base you have to pay for that. Now, next comes public trust doctrine the state is not absolute owner means a state means a country or any region or any uh, suppose in our case in India we can say that a district or a state or the entire uh, central government or the country or the central total country or the central government itself cannot be the absolute owner, but a trustee of all natural resources and they should facilitate public use and enjoyment and provides also protection to the legitimate interest of a large number of people for that matters also for strategic national interest. So, you can utilize for, for a national interest a particular resource or you can utilize a natural resource by when it comes to the benefit of a large number of people. So, if you see that in a sense it says that a resource is not something that it is untouchable, it can be utilized with proper justification, proper you know a volume of users, benefit of a larger community and finally, the country. So, next decentralization under again principles of NEP. Decentralization it involves the transfer of power from central authority to state local authorities in order to give them jurisdiction, because environmental issues are best you know handled at the special level where they are prominent. Suppose, in a district there is an issue, then the district collector, district commissioner is the best person to handle that. So, the local authority can actually address this issue better than the regional or the you know or the national level authority. Integration, this means that the inclusion of environmental consideration, inclusions this word is important of environmental consideration in sectoral policy making, in sectoral policy making. This also talks about the integration of social and natural sciences is in environmental related policy research and the strengthening of relevant linkages among various government agencies, which are responsible for implementing the environmental policies in our country. Next, environmental standard settings, very, very important aspect. Now, this must reflect the economic and the social development situation in which they apply. Standards which are adopted must be problem specific, society specific to avoid unjust social or economic costs. Very, 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 very important that you know to avoid unjust social and economic cost. We must keep this you know in mind all the time. Preventive action very, very important does not cost much, but it is preferable to prevent environmental damages from occurring in the first place rather than attempting to restore once it degrades the system. So, prevention is better than cure. Okay. Now, next environmental offsetting there is a general obligations under NEP to protect the biodiversity as they are often not considered you know significant from a specially economic point of view other than you know looking them as you know some raw materials. But we understand if the biodiversity is affected or lost almost everything whichever is present in the ecosystem will irreversibly be affected. Because in the ecosystem it is completely linked with each other. It is not that a particular plant species if you are just you know remove from the ecosystem and you know sell it in the market and earn lot of money for one time, but after that what? Because that particular plant may be host for many other you know microorganisms, many other important valuable organisms and those organisms probably are also creating some beneficial activities in the soil and the plant. So, these interrelationships 
gets affected when a particular resource is totally removed from our ecosystem. So, environment offsetting is also important principle under NEP. Mm -hmm.